Uh, hello, I'm Quentin Cooper. I've been involved with the Cheltenham Science Festival since pretty much the beginning. And among other things, I have hosted the finals of International Famer, which is a great pleasure to do. One question that comes up repeatedly is what happens when the oil runs out? And in fact, will the oil run out? Now, it's a fossil fuel, so as long as we keep using it, it's finite and we will run out of reserves. It might be a while, it might be a century, it might be less, it might be more, we don't know. But it is an exhaustible supply. Now, there are alternatives out there, even from the early days of motoring. First cars, electric cars, go back to the 1800s, the early days of motoring. People forget that things like the classic, the first mass-produced automobile, the 1908 Model T Ford, was a multi-fuel car. It could run off kerosene and ethanol. It wasn't just designed to run off gasoline. And we're seeing more and more of these hybrid cars. I and mean, I think by the last calculation, there's something like 30 million plus multi-fuel vehicles in the world. And that includes everything from electric cars to the odd weird one that runs off human waste. Now, I'm not suggesting cars powered by human waste is the future or solar panels necessarily. Uh, and I do think there will be some serious problems as the oil runs out and the prices go up. But there are alternatives out there. There's always people fantasizing about the cars that run off water. So far, every car that runs off water I've seen is a bit of either a gross exaggeration or a damn right lie. But I think we will find alternatives out there, and maybe along the way we'll find ways to reduce our consumption to make the oil that is there last a bit longer. I mean, I think it's a bit like when you travel and you go to a country, it's very rare you go somewhere and think, I never want to go back here. You learn a bit about it and you want to learn more. I think science is like that. You always end up expanding, expanding, expanding. Somebody I've once put it, you know, as the, see if I get this right, as the coastline of our knowledge increases, so does the shore of uncertainty that's out there. The more things that we know, the more things that we realise we don't know that are out there as well. And I think it'd be better if scientists talk more about the unknowns, like gravity, well, you know, we don't quite know how gravity works. You know, the Higgs boson, it might be a Higgs boson or a bunch of Higgs boson, or there might be no Higgs boson at all. And I think it's easier for people to identify with the things we don't know, because when we talk about what we do know, well, I know it, and maybe you don't. But when we don't know it, oh, you don't know how gravity works? Hey, I don't know how gravity works either. I have a lot of memorable moments from the Cheltenham Science Festival. Some of them I have to keep under a close guard because I don't know how they ever happened in public in the first place. And quite a few of them seem to involve Robert Winston doing strange things. But I remember odd things like seeing a sword swallower in a bar in Cheltenham demonstrating sword swallowing, somehow with Robert Winston yet again involved as well. I've seen sudden amazing things when you've seen a bit of science suddenly come to life in a fame lab demonstration. You know, I've seen things where uh, children have been there, and you can see the moment where the light bulb goes on in their head, where they got an idea. And then I've had events that I've been involved with, which have just surprised me. I did a Science of Board Games event uh, last year. I mean, it was the last day, and it was Sunday, and it was raining, and we thought, is it going to work? And we had a completely full house, and we realised we tapped into something else, and that's what children's good at.